Good morning. It's Memorial Day weekend. Beautiful morning here. Castler Farm, the Giving Gardens, MJ's Homestead, whatever the name of our little oasis is. Cast a vote. Give me a suggestion. We need a name. We need a cool name. Just taking a moment here to soak in the sunshine and the blue sky. I'll give you a quick little garden tour, let you know what's going on here and uh, throw out an invite to anybody who wants to come and hang out, have a beer, a brat, a burger, take a tour of the garden. Here we got the ducks. They're so funny. They're like little kids when they run through the sprinkler on the hose. They're a trip. Great addition to our happy little homestead here. Rhubarb and raspberries. Are you freaking kidding me? Look how big those are. Oh, and if that's not enough rhubarb for you, look, there's some more. Mm. Oh, look, more rhubarb. Oh, hey, look it, there's another rhubarb. Perhaps I should do something with the rhubarb. Rhubarb crisp, anybody? Oh, I need more time. My wonderful bird feeder, my husband moved back here to the backyard for me. Works out great because then the chickens and the ducks just pick up whatever falls down. And I put Crisco on the poles there so that the squirrels wouldn't make it up. It worked for a while, I have to re-Crisco it. Here's the fire pits. Everything filling in nicely around it. We did manage to have a fire out here night before last. Just Steve and I sat out here and hey, nobody called the fire department. It was amazing. I think that uh, the neighbors who, who called on us constantly that one year have uh, moved. <laughs> One of my favorite places of the garden right here when this I think it's a honeysuckle bush blooms it smells so sweet and the bees are just so busy back here it's awesome to sit around the uh, fire pit and just watch them they kind of sound like a uh, like little bombers buzzing in and out mm. Uh, and then we had to do some finagling over here, reinforcing the gates because the dang chickens are naughty and managed to jump over, perch on top of, get inside of, and scratch everything up. So we've had to get uh, creative with wiring. <laughs> All right, bye ducks, chickens, have fun scratching. All right, we're starting the tour from the back side of the garden today. Get a look at the things that I seem to skim past. Uh, so over here we have raspberries coming in and black raspberries. These are the queen, or the Anne, the white raspberries. They're so good. Uh, those are the ones that I was so afraid to chop all the way down. Everything I read said, cut them down to the ground, cut them down. So I did, and it was very nerve wracking, but I did it and look, they came back. I am so relieved. This is all buckwheat I have growing in this bed here just for a, uh, a soil fixer and a ground cover for right now until I get more wood chips. Need more wood chips. The first raised beds of the garden, this was the, what we started out with. Can you believe it? Inside here we've got, oh, lettuces and kale and carrots and beets and da 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 but this is the area here that we would like to instead of having two small hoop houses is to combine the two into one big hoop house that we can walk into um, and so it'll be kind of like a greenhouse it will be a greenhouse it will be a greenhouse and my work area over here always appreciate a good work area I cleaned it up a little bit, but still, <laughs> you know, could use a, 
an outdoor shed. <laughs> you know, we come to the chicken coop and the peas all growing up alongside it. So far right now, the, uh, the chickens and the ducks have been housing together and it really hasn't been too bad. But we have a couple of uh, projects going on in here. This big thing here is going to be uh, uh, a pond and we're going to use all the leftover wood from the deck. Thanks deck dude for leaving all that for us. And we're gonna make a, put a, a deck around it. Oh, and then look at that. I love the way the morning sun washes over the garden. Mm, I do, I do. Two more, four more, two more hoop houses, four more garden beds. Suppose that, uh, you know, really, this could also be a walk-in greenhouse. Could you imagine if I had two greenhouses I could grow all winter long? Hmm. You know, those hoop houses are really not that expensive. Cattle panels over that, plastic, and that's it. You got it. Look at the size of this comfrey. Comfrey. It's going to have some beautiful purple flowers on it, but this is one of those uh, chop and drop plants that makes a wonderful mulch. I was so happy to add it to the garden. So I'm going to have to start chopping that before it flowers so that it puts out more leaves so I can keep chopping and dropping all through summer. Got a little peach tree back there. Oh, they're doing well. They're doing well. They're, they're living. So, you know, to all those naysayers who tell me I'm going to have to spray all kinds of chemicals and shit on everything, you know, there's going to be some care and some maintenance, but none we can't handle. Another little uh, peach tree. Is that another peach tree down here? I think so. Lots of lemon balm. If you want any lemon balm, hit me up. We got more blackberries over here. Peas, look at those peas. Oh, they're doing so well. Come on, babies, grow. Grow, grow, grow. Uh, these are the beds that I inoculated with the mushrooms, so we're gonna let those sit pretty. I think in the center of this one I can put maybe a squash or something. Yeah, and then the compost pile back over here with Steve's potatoes growing out of it. <laughs> That's a fun experiment right there. We'll see if it's gonna be potatoes or mostly, mostly foliage. The plants and pots, if you're interested in any plants and pots, again, hit me up, come on over, peruse, see what we got, see what you need, see what you want, see what we have that you thought you didn't need or didn't want, but realize today that you do. Uh, over here we have, this is valerian root, that is going to, uh, or valerian plant, that's going to get it probably about four and a half, five feet tall, the flowers will, but these things, mm, the flowers, are amazing. They're gonna be big white heads on them. Kinda like uh, like Queen Anne's lace almost, but more snowballish. <laughs> um, but then I have to cut those because when they seed, man, when they go to seed, this whole bed right here was all covered in valerian. And we potted up a whole bunch of it. You can see over here, here's a rogue valerian right there. And the roots go down deep. so. Um, so I got to get those out of there, but they're such a beautiful plant that I can't bear to just pull them up like weeds. Asparagus all doing really well. We did have a couple of dinners already from the asparagus, but you know, it takes a little while to mature and get going. This was the third year that we had it in, so we harvested from it, but I think we're going to let it go now. Hostas in the vegetable bed, you know, because why not? This area back here, we've been putting, uh... We kind of fenced it off here for the the chickens and the ducks and then we threw all the leaves off of our garden that we mulched for the winter um, put all the leaves in there and they have just been working on it scratching it up breaking it down pooping in there so uh, so this area over here will be able to build up the soil and then um, you know probably sod that we cut out from over here we might flip it where it is or put some over there anyway that uh, that's building up that's just building up soil so we'll be able to use that later in our endeavors it smells so good out here right now oh, look at all these got peonies back in pots over there look at how big and beautiful those are I almost thought that that was just in the ground and they're gonna flower look at that Got more raspberries back there. 
So, yeah, dude, look at. See, these are all those little valerians. Oh my gosh. You want valerian? I got valerian for you. Um, I don't know. Those are weeds that maybe we thought was going to be something, so we potted up. <laughs> Some things we were just pulling out of the ground, like, I don't know what this is, but let's put it in a pot just in case it's going to turn out to be something. Uh, this is horseradish. Best left in the pot, otherwise it could take over a whole bed, but it's a wonderful companion plant to potatoes and to, um, well, to, it's horseradish. What animal or bug is going to want to eat horseradish, right? On uh, the herb hill, we have a tree here. I think this is the plum tree. It was the biggest tree that we got. Uh, it's going to hold down that bottom half of the hill there nicely, I do believe. Just all kinds of stuff in here. If you want to know more about what's in here, you're just going to have to come and look. Strawberries are just spreading all throughout in there. More comfrey up over there. And then over here we have another peach tree. A little guild going on over here. We got potatoes and chives and yarrow and freaking oregano and oregano and oregano and oregano. Um, anybody want any oregano? Plant or just as the herb? I really love how it is just like taking over the stairs. It's gonna break it all apart. This year I'm doing lots of things in pots because, well because I'm, I'm running out of room. You would think that with, even with all this space here that I would, could not possibly run out of room. But I am. Planted sweet potatoes and more potatoes because just Steve keeps getting more stuff. So I got to put it in the ground. Over here I'm doing three sisters. So I've got uh, glass gem corn started up in here. And then yesterday I planted red swan bush beans and, um, and then also baby butternut squash. So the three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash. So I just did a nice little variation of corns, beans, and squash. Uh, over here we got peas coming up over here. I think these are the king tut. I think they're going to be purple peas. Mm, yes. And then buckwheat grown in there for right now. Uh, I think I'm going to do maybe pickles in here. I have a couple of panels, uh, small cattle panels that I'm going to use to trellis. Potatoes grown in the very ends. Potatoes grown in the ends there. More buckwheat over here. Just again, just fixing the soil. Just working as a ground cover for right now. I'll chop it, drop it, mix it in with the soil, and then plant uh, over here. I think I'm going to do squash, zucchini, uh, summer squash, maybe. Hmm. I have to check and see what's going to go well with those potatoes. I'm going to do a tomato here in this big old pot. Again, here, look, we're waiting for mulch. Come on, bring us the mulch. Bring us the mulch. Uh, I got turmeric started over here from Beth and Eric. Let's see how that does. Hmm. Here we have the apple trees. Look at that little apple tree. It'll be so fun to watch how these grow and uh, mature. I think I need to pop off those flowers though so that production goes down into the root. I uh, got rue. Who grows rue in their garden? I do. I don't even know what to use it for, but it's a cool, it's a cool Mediterranean herb that dates back to the Bible. So um, yeah, so it's kind of, kind of cool, right? Savory's there. There's another rue. We've got all kinds of stuff coming up over here. My bee. That was a cool. Where did I find that? Goodwill? No. Uh, yes. Thrift store maybe. It's like, yeah. I'll take a bee on a stick. And then over here, I've got bay leaf. Mm -hmm. It's going to grow into a nice little tree, hopefully. This is the little eucalyptus that I overwintered and then and just as it was time to go out it like dried up and died but that one little guy right there was living so I repotted it and uh, gave it a good drink of water and let's see if it comes back to life it might pots again pots coming over here patchouli yeah heliotrope not quite sure it's kind of like a borage plant that I think I read got peppers and plants this here is a little moringa tree, a dwarf moringa tree. It is edible. It is also a really cool, um, a really cool addition to the, uh, to, to the, to us. <laughs> but with all of these cool uh, perennial 
herbs that I'm growing, the patchouli and the bay laurel and the moringa and the turmeric, um, I need a greenhouse to overwinter it because this is the south side of my house. And it's just a kitchen window. And then all of the rest of those windows are bathrooms and closets and bedrooms. And that, yeah. So not good light inside the house for keeping such things. So, wow, that's, that would be a good reason to have a big walk-in greenhouse, wouldn't it? It'll happen. Ah, oh, we got pa uh, potatoes coming up over here. We have potatoes everywhere. This year we kind of went for the, for the whole, let's just put stuff everywhere. Why does it have to be in a row? Why does it have to be all together? Why do we have to have that conventional way of thinking? We don't. The strawberries here, look at how tall they stand. They are tall and proud strawberries. Look at all the flowers. Can't wait. Strawberries are another one of those things that we're just gonna let just go and be wherever they wanna be. Look, they jumped and now they're over there. They're all in that bed. They're all growing up in the, <laughs> in, the uh, in the oregano. Look at that strawberry in the oregano. Look at, there's another strawberry in the oregano. It's like, where's Waldo? Of the strawberries all down in there. How am I gonna get to them? I don't know. Chipmunks probably get to them first, those ones, but that's okay. <sighs> another comfrey there, another valerian. Those two are going to compete in height and beauty, I do believe. This stuff, I can't remember what it's called, but it spreads and it grows up tall and it's really, really cool. This one here is in the path though, so I think I'm gonna dig that one up and put it in a pot or just transplant it somewhere. Blackberries all doing well. This is a butterfly bush. You cut that down in the in the early spring and then it will come back beautifully. I think I want to move that though. It's kind of tucked back in here with the blackberries and I want to give the blackberries a little bit more room. So we'll have to find a place for that. Another peach tree here doing very well. The garlic patch. So now once this is harvested, this little area back here might become the kitchen. <laughs> the kitchen, you say? Not a whole kitchen, but maybe this is where we put like the barbecue pit. Once the gazebo goes up, it'll be kind of shaded. And then this wall right here, I think we'll put a little panel up, like just some lattice that we can still kind of see through, but also give us and our neighbors over there a little bit more privacy so that as they're walking out the door and we're right there they don't feel like they have to say you know hi every time and then this the deck thank you deck dudes rounded out the corners there quite nicely so that we wouldn't get uh, caught on it rounded out the edges did a nice little sanding job there so yeah so now we got to get the gazebo up if anybody wants to help give me a holler I'll cook I'll buy beer. I'll give you food all summer. <laughs> and then the pond. Everything coming around it quite nicely. So you've got some water cress. Is it water cress or water chestnut? Something in there. Got a little lily pad coming up. I have to go down and get some tadpoles though. Some snails out of Huff Park. Maybe that's what I'll do first thing this morning. In the view. And then over here we got the cold frame. Look at the size of that freaking lettuce, man. It's huge. Gotta pick that first thing this morning. I munched on a couple of leaves last night and without, without washing them. <laughs> you can see the leftovers there. And uh, Steve said I was savage because I didn't wash them off first. But it was raining. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. Oh, and Annie painted me this mailbox a couple years ago when her and the kids were up. It was just a plain white mailbox. And I like to have mailboxes because, you know, it's nice to, there's one way back there. Um, but you can put stuff in them, you know, you can put koozies in them and extra tools and whatnot. And so that's kind of cool. This is going to be a, another trellis once we get the gazebo up then we'll put the other side up and it might be kind of the same as this but i think i'll like grow tomatoes or annual vining things up and around it instead of uh 
instead of grapes or something else. This area cleaned up all nice and well. This was really not much of a space before, but now it's a, a useful space. I like to have useful spaces. Hear the ducks? They go nuts when the wild ducks fly over, and then the wild ducks tease them. So I'm painting the garage right now, but this will be um, sunflowers. And another little favorite spot of mine. This is like the shade garden, the springy garden. I did uh, inoculate back there for mushrooms, but look, as you can see, it's already a prime spot for mushrooms growing on the dead wood that's back there. My collection of odds and ends, little finds, right? Little bird houses that have since fallen apart and rotted and whatever. The bleeding hearts tucked back in the corner, like a special little uh, surprise for you. You didn't think that there was gonna be anything back around this corner but there are bleeding hearts. And then over here, Steve's work table for painting. This is all mint and lemon balm, all different kinds of mint and lemon balm. And eventually this whole area is just mint and lemon balm, which is great surrounding the chicken coop because bugs and rodents and whatnot, uh, peppermint and mints and even lemon balm are natural repellents of insects and they smell great when you walk through them. So what more could you ask? Again the way that morning sun blankets that garden. <laughs> I couldn't be happier.